Good morning. We welcome you to worship at First Wayne Street United Methodist Church. And as always, how grateful we are that you have taken the time to spend with Christ and you've invited us into wherever you are today, um, break room, your living room. Um, we're glad that you've invited us in to be with you as we invite Christ into our presence. Did you expect him to be here? He is here, you know. So we're going to greet him and we're going to praise him. A couple of announcements I do want to make. I want to update folks that here at First Wayne Street United Methodist Church, we believe in-person worship is not essential. Worship is essential, but we're hoping through these recordings and this online worship, you're able to worship just as well. But in order to keep people safe, and especially our most vulnerable community, we are continuing the suspension of in-person worship through June the 7th. And so the very earliest that we would have in-person worship in the sanctuary would be June 14th. And certainly by the time we open, we're going to be abiding by all of the CDC regulations, social distancing, wanting to do everything we can so that once we come back into this place, you will feel comfortable and safe. So wanted to let you know that. And in a way, this worship, it's too bad because we know that we're missing some great folks that don't have the technical skill set to worship with us online. But on the other hand, we're glad you are here and we are so grateful for new folks um, that are part of our faith community as we worship online. Um, because we do continue to be online, we want to remind you about our daily devotionals on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Those are available on Facebook. Uh, Ella Miller's online doing a children's message on Mondays. I'm doing devotions on Tuesdays. Great music from Jeff North and the North family on Wednesdays, and then we have Mark Truesdale with Life at the Table on Thursdays. So lots of ways for you to engage, to grow as a disciple, and to worship the Lord. And so we are grateful for that. So we're glad you're here this morning. Let us prepare ourselves to worship. Please join me in our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice in it. We gather today in joy as we worship God. We come not because we are perfect, but because we are loved. We come by faith in Christ's love and sacrifice, even when our faith is no bigger than a mustard seed. We come in faith, even when life feels unsettled and challenging, believing that God is present with us. We come seeking a meaning and purpose for our lives, grounded in the love of our divine parent. Let us worship.
Friends, isn't it wonderful to know that God is ever more ready to hear our prayers often than we are to trust him and to turn to him in our time of prayer. But we're going to pray this morning. I invite you to bow your head wherever you are, center your hearts, invite Christ in as we pray together. Let us pray. Holy One, we are so grateful this day for who you are, that you dare to call us to be your disciples, that you dare to invite us to follow you, that you entrust us with your ministry, this your ministry, your church, and for that we are grateful. We pray that your Holy Spirit continues to change us and transform us more into the likeness of Christ, that it empowers us to be more like Jesus. Help us to be more extravagantly generous with our gifts and our abilities, with our love and our care and compassion to the world. And we pray that your healing and Holy Spirit continues to be at work in this world as this terrible virus does its worst, and yet in the midst of it all, you call us to do our very best. And so give us the courage and the strength for the day. And today is a Mother's Day Sunday, and so we lift up our mothers. We lift up those who have been like mothers to us as we pray today for our mothers who have given us life and love that we may show them reverence and love. We pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and remember them, always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And now let us join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. i 
Our scripture lesson comes to us this morning from the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which would have been the early Christian church in the region known as Ephesus. Let us hear the word of God as it comes to us this day. Paul writes, You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me as we prepare for, to, to receive the message? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so here is a question. What really matters in your life? What are the key foundational principles that guide your decisions and your priorities? What is the rock that is solid under you, that is immovable, that's always there? What is it that really matters in your life? I think especially during this time of challenge, but perhaps through any times of challenge. Too often we get caught up in what's going on around us, we major in the minors, and then something happens that really grabs hold of us, perhaps grabs hold of our souls. And we begin to think about what is it in life that really matters? What are the key hallmarks, the key foundations on which I stand. What are the truths that for me are rock solid? I think in my own life, too often there have been times when I have allowed other people to sway what I do or influence the decisions I make. I let the world around me influence my priorities or my values. But at the end of the day, when you look inside your very self, what is it you believe? What is it you believe to be true? What is at the heart of your life and your values? What is most important in your life? I wanted to even ask this question. What is it that you would be willing to give 
your life for. These times that we're in really perhaps have our lives, our values, a swirl. We're navigating waters we've never been in before. I think in some ways people are suddenly discovering that there are things that they've taken for granted that they shouldn't have. They're beginning to really reevaluate what is important in life and what they want to make a priority. And I think maybe people are even looking at what are the things that I've counted on in my life that suddenly I can't depend on anymore? What is it I'm going to depend on? And so I thought of a, a variety of things. First of all, I was thinking about how many people are finding their financial foundations shaken. Perhaps too often we depended on money to give us security, and suddenly now it's not there anymore. Jobs have been lost. Hours have been cut back. Businesses are finding that they aren't able to do the same kind of work they did, and so they're struggling financially. And, you know, it really came to my mind as this payroll protection plan came out, and there was a sense that there were limited dollars and limited time and businesses and people were so scared and so panic-stricken that they were rushing. They were rushing to see if they could apply for these um, programs to help offer them support. There were small business owners that, right in our own congregation that I talked with, that were veritably in tears. They were so concerned about their business. Suddenly, things that they had counted on in the past, they couldn't depend on. Um, anymore. So many are finding that their financial foundations have been shaken. I thought about institutions, our governments that we counted on, whether it's our national government, whether it's our state government, and this is not trying to be political. We're looking at all kinds of institutional leadership, and we're wondering. We're not sure whether we can believe them. We're not sure that we can trust them. They're not, we're not sure they're going to continue, and so not only have maybe our financial foundations been shaken, our business foundations been shaken, but we're finding we're shaken um, by watching our institutional foundations. We're wondering about the church, and the church will continue. Jesus has promised that. But we're wondering about our institutions. And then we think about our families and our, our friends. We're seeing people get sick. We're seeing loved ones die, people that we had come to depend on, thinking that they would always be there. Um, I jotted family members and friends have been infected by the virus. And then some of our members, they've been around family members that may have had the virus, and they're worried um, about their family and having to quarantine. We are worried about fragile family members and friends. And suddenly... Our health foundations have been shaken. And in the midst of dealing with all of this change and quarantine, our mental and emotional foundations have been shaken. And not everything that's happening in our world is about the virus. Uh, the congregation here has lost a dear, dear friend and member of our faith community completely unexpectedly. Uh, that didn't have anything to do with the virus. And suddenly we find ourselves in the midst of, of grief. We find that our loving relationships and those foundations have been shaken as well. Somehow we're wondering, what are the foundations? And that's kind of my challenge for you this morning. As we think about this amazing letter from the Apostle Paul, and he is sharing from his heart to this early Christian community the key foundation for his life. And so I wanted to talk about that this morning and challenge you to think about that, to go back to the original question I asked, what really matters in your life? What is it that you use as the rudder to steer your boat? What is the rock, the solid rock that is under you when it seems like everything else is shaking around you? I remember um, 
talking with someone one time about foundations, and I shared with them that Jesus Christ is the foundation of my life, and that that's where I find ultimate, solid support, the guidance that comes. And he's the foundation of my life because of my belief in his death on the cross for me and his resurrection after three days. And this person challenged me and they said, well, yeah, but what if that's not true? What if none of that is true? What if that is all fiction? What if it's all been made up? How can that be a foundation for you? And I said, you know, it's a foundation of faith, but I don't think the question is, what if it's not true? I think the bigger question is, what if it is true? What if I am right about that? The Apostle Paul sat down to write a letter to one of these faith communities. We call it the letter to the Ephesians, but at the end of the day, this precious letter has been retained by the faith communities for 2,000 years. It's been passed between them, and eventually the words of truth were so foundational to the church that it became part of our sacred writings, what we know as the letter to the Ephesians. Um, for Paul, it was what really mattered. So I want to invite you, we're going to take two verses from this chapter 2, and um, I'm going to invite you to read this with me. But God, who is rich in mercy, I'll tell you, Paul's phrasing is so rich and so dense and there is so much there you got to take it in bite-sized pieces but God who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our sins our trespasses even though we were spiritually dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Do you hear Paul's words in the resurrection, his belief in resurrection? And here's the great hook line. Say it with me. By grace, you have been saved. We praise God for that. Grace, what are we talking about when we say grace? It's not like the grace we say over our meal. What is grace? Grace is the unmerited undeserved, you can't earn it, love of God that is steadfast at work in our lives, calling us to him. Um, sometimes the phrase is wooing us, wooing us. God's grace is always at work, whispering in our ear, inviting us to hear, inviting us to respond. By grace, you have been saved. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. God's grace, his love and forgiveness is a gift. And today, my friends, God is offering you this gift right now this morning, just as he always has offered it. You cannot earn it. You do not deserve it. You don't have to work for it, but here's the thing. You must open your heart and your life to receive it. There's a very famous painting, maybe you've seen it. It's this beautiful picture of Jesus and he's standing outside of a door and his hand is up, he's knocking. He's knocking on the door just as he knocks on the door of our hearts. But the thing that is so special about that painting is there is no doorknob on Jesus' side. Jesus is never going to take that doorknob of your heart or your life and yank that door open. He's not going to force himself in. But out of grace, he is ever calling to you, knocking on the door of your heart, of your life asking you to invite him in to let him in to receive the gift that he offers you must be willing 
to receive what Christ offers, what God offers through faith. Faith is hoping for and believing in what we cannot see and we cannot prove, and it doesn't mean we won't have our doubts. But faith says that something has changed my life and touched my heart, and I have to respond to that. And so I invite you to receive this gift of grace through faith that God offers. It's the gift of love. It's the gift of forgiveness. It is the gift of eternal life. It is the gift from a God who promises to always be there, always be with you on the journey, no matter what might come. It is the gift that really matters. Um, I jotted down, it is the foundational rock on which we can depend. And maybe today, my friend, you are saying, yes, but what if you are wrong, Pastor? And my response to you is to come back saying, the real question is, what if I am right? So what are your foundations? I would say, Family does matter. Friends matter. Being kind to others and working hard, all of that matters. Those are important principles for life. Being a good friend, finding a purpose for your life that matters and makes a difference. And perhaps we would even say that money matters, that we have enough for food to keep a roof over our heads and enough to return a portion to God and to be generous to others. Those things matter. But at the end of the day, what really matters is Jesus Christ. It's the eternal, never-changing truth, the one who will never leave you or forsake you, the one whose grace, whose unmerited love is forever at work in your lives. That is the true foundation. Faith in Jesus Christ is what really matters. Will you pray with me? Lord, we hear you knocking at our hearts, at our lives, knocking on the door of our very souls. And we pray this day that each one of us can commit ourselves to you through faith, to follow you and to be your disciples, to invite you into our lives and into our hearts, that we make you the most important thing in our lives the thing that really matters. And Lord, I know this day that there are some who have already committed themselves to you, but each and every day, each and every moment becomes a new opportunity to recommit, to pick ourselves up, to allow you to brush us off, and to begin again as a disciple. And I believe there is also someone out there who has been searching and seeking, feeling unsettled, and looking for that one thing that will make all of the difference. And so, Lord, I pray this day that in hearing your word, they will step out and commit themselves for the first time to be your disciple, knowing that we don't have to have all of the answers. We never will have them all. But each day when we place our lives and ourselves in your keeping, you will comfort us, you will strengthen us, you will guide us, and you will fill us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. It is in your name that we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Our mission ministry this month is Wellspring. They're hoping to have it a bridge camp four weeks long from the end of July into August, focusing on school preparedness with recreational activities too. If it's not safe then, it will be on hold until 2021. The only program that's up and running and booming is the food pantry. It's a grim time for Wellspring. They've had to cancel their traditional in-person fundraiser. First Wayne Street can make a difference in this downtown ministry. Thank you for all you do for our community. Our food bank offers food and personal hygiene items to the nearly 52,000 city residents who experience food insecurity in Allen County. Just bring a photo ID and postmark mail and we will get you what you need. We're blessed to have a fleet of vehicles to make visits all over the city with our Wellspring on Wheels program. Wellspring Interfaith, enriching the lives of Fort Wayne Central City residents every single day. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for the opportunity of giving back some of your blessings that you've given to us. Bless the ministries that you have asked us to support. In Christ's name, amen.
Friends, I pray that you have been blessed today by the power of the Holy Spirit and that you have sensed God at work in your life and in your heart and that this will empower you not only for the rest of the day, but it will empower you as you go into this week. God is going to bring people into your life that you are called to pray with, you are called to be kind to, you are called to reach out with the love of Christ. I don't know what that's going to be for you this week, but I know that God has called you and God has empowered you and God will use you if you will let him do that. So let us prepare to hear the benediction, the good word. Go now in the peace and the love and the grace of God Almighty who pours his grace into your life and we simply receive it by faith. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace this week, my friends. Amen.